this is a, a, a part of the challenge. We have good relations and we have a lot of people in Germany uh, that have uh, good um, feelings and impressions if they think about India. Mm. They think the uh, um, uh, misunderstandings is that uh, some people think that uh, Indians are not so um, tough in following objectives. Yeah? Mm. And this is not true. Looking to the youth in India, for example, they much better know what they want to have in the future than, for example, uh, young students in Germany mm. that are thinking very long about what should I do in, as a job and need uh, one or two, two years in Italy or India mm. <laughs> to find out what, what the right thing is. Hello and welcome. You're watching the GEO interview. On today's session, we have a very special guest with us today. On the eve of the 76th Independence Day, with the collaboration of CAS, we have Mr. Jürgen Hart. Uh, under former Chancellor Angela Merkel, he was the coordinator of Transcendental Cooperation. He is also the member of the working group of the CDU, the Christian Democratic Union, of whom he has been a member of parliament with since the year 2009. And he has a long and lengthy list uh, of achievements and acclaims, but we'll talk about them one by one because we have a long list of topics from defense, security, environment, climate change, and much, much more. Thank you for doing this, sir. Hello. Hello. Uh, for starters, I would like to ask you that uh, you have been, is this your fourth visit to India? I think in total my fifth visit, my yes. fourth visit in my political capacity. Political yep. capacity. So as your experience as a foreign uh, delegate, what is the cultural uh, nuances and uniqueness that strikes you about India and Germany in this relationship? I think that uh, most of the people in Germany didn't see India now um, as we should see India as a very progressive and modern state. Uh, but I think uh, more and more German, not only business people, but also civil society people see that India is now not only the biggest state in the world concerning uh, members of uh, in inhabitants, but also one of the most important biggest players in the international politics. Right. Uh that also leads me to the question that uh, you were the transcendental coordinator and you are one of the key members to get Germany in closer contact with Canada and United States. Mm. What are those experiences have, uh, have taught you and how do you think is the, it important now in foreign policy matters, especially with India-German relationships? Mm. Uh, I have learned in that time that uh, uh, the best option to, to have success in foreign policy is to be able to um, take the position of the other side, to try to uh, look to the challenge, to the common uh, challenge or question on the table uh, with the eyes of the, uh, the others. And um, uh, this is what we um, sometimes miss in the transatlantic relations, therefore this uh, job of a coordinator of transatlantic cooperation was founded in the beginning of the 80s in the, uh, in the German Foreign Office. Yes. Um, uh, the biggest mistake uh, sometimes is that we believe that we know each other very well, mm. and this is not true. Mm. <laughs> uh, most of the um, um, uh, 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 concerns uh, are coming out of a situation that we misunderstand before because we have the wrong uh, um, uh, uh, pre perspectives on, on each other and and, and uh, therefore we have to 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 be able and willing to accept and to see that the other side maybe has a totally different view on the topic and trusting on that if intelligent people are thinking about challenges uh, at the end they come to the same and, and, and consensus uh, result on what yeah. has to be done yeah. but from totally different perspectives and we have to start from that different perspectives to coming mm. to a good result because otherwise we only produce um, conflicts and uh, misunderstandings. Uh, this uh, word that you said that understanding the other side, well this understanding between our two countries has been quite old since Max Mueller, Rabindranath mm. Tagore and this cultural interaction has been going on for a long long time. So when we look at this cultural interaction, how do you think it shapes our foreign policy and these ideas today in the current situation between India-German relationships with these old heritage that we both carry as nations and two new democracies flourishing? Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is um, a, a part of the challenge. We have good relations and we have a lot of people in Germany uh, that have uh, good um, feelings and impressions if they think about India. Mm. They think that Indian people are 
um, more relaxed than people in Europe, um, that they are maybe closer to to um, uh, religion or metaphysic, uh, 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 metaphysical, meta metaphysical changes. Um, but one of the um, uh, misunderstandings is that uh, some people think that uh, Indians are not so um, tough in following objectives. Yeah? Mm. And this is not true. Looking to the youth in India, for example, they much better know what they want to have in the future than, for example, uh, young students in Germany mm. that are thinking very long about what should I do in, as a job and need uh, one or two, two years in Italy or India mm. <laughs> to find out what, what the right thing is. Mm. I think uh, um, uh, uh, we underestimate the uh, the the, um, uh, 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 the the people in India having clear objectives and following them. Uh, Germans maybe think that India is uh, relaxed, but also not not so much focused and not so not so tough in, in following objectives. Uh, with that also comes in mind that uh, as we are two democracies and we have a large student body and a huge diaspora of Indians in Germany, over thirty thousand last year and ever increasing. How can they shape the foreign policy and bilateral relations between our two countries? Um, I think uh, every Indian in Germany is an ambassador of India. Yes. Um, and uh, it is uh, in different ways. Indian people bring culture and, uh, by the way, also excellent food to Germany. Mm. But Indian people are also bringing a lot of knowledge and expertise into engineering, technology, medicine. We have so many fields in Germany where um, in, people with Indian origin are in a, um, in a, a forehand position. Uh, um, yes. And uh, uh, if uh, uh, they, they promote that, that in India, millions and millions of people are um, only waiting to have their chance, um, I think that we will have uh, much more Indian People, people from Indian origin in Germany in the next years um, for studying or uh, for a job than we have now. Uh, you're talking about scientific relationships, Germany and India have had a partnership, for example, in establishing the IIT Chennai or uh, steel plants at Tambur and other places. Also, we have uh, uh, India-German relationship and council for scientific studies. So all these scientific mites and studies, how do you think are important for the current sustainable development goals that India and Germany are trying to achieve together with solar energy alliances mm. and other sustainable alliances that we are uh, trying to achieve? Um, we, have, we have common census between the civil societies in Germany and yes. India that the climate change is uh, one of the biggest challenges we have to face. Mm. Um, I think um, most of the people in India know that we also have some other challenges to face. Yes. Uh, welfare for the people, yes. um, uh, food, uh, uh, clear water, um, uh, but also peace and, and stability. Um, um, and we have to make sure that uh, there is no conflict or concurrence between the uh, different um, um, objectives of, of, of politics. And uh, therefore, we also need a civil society debate um, on, um, on how we reach uh, climate change objectives. Uh, from my point of view, um, uh, one of the biggest challenges in climate change is to uh, develop intelligent systems to um, organize energy uh, mm -hmm. supply for the future. And I think especially in that field, um, concerning how a digital community should be developed, mm. uh, where um, um, uh, energy saving and using of, of renewables um, mm. is optimized, uh, there is a field where India is uh, better than Germany at the moment. Mm. And on the other hand, concerning um, installment of, um, 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 uh, of, uh, 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 of um, solar energy or wind energy, uh, I think German engineering is also um, a, a strong pillar uh, and uh, we both should match our capabilities um, and at the end uh, 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 one plus one is more than two and yes. this is uh, how business and, and uh, solving of challenges uh, hmm. works. Speaking about business, Germany is the seventh biggest FDI uh, concentration to India. 
uh, there are over 1700 german companies in india and almost 200 indian companies in germany and there is a large scale mid size companies in both the countries because germany has a backbone of a mid size company economy mm. how do you think that is going to shape the future for this particular idea of uh, development climate change and how can we collaborate this on a ground level and how can it affect mm. this is one of my my impressions i had in the last years that the indian society yes. is also very much trusting on the entrepreneurship of um, 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 individuals yes. and that the indian society is um, mainly driven not by big companies mm. maybe some big families okay with a big big business mm. but also of um, hundreds of thousands of um, uh, one man or uh, family owned or family driven small companies right. and this is relatively similar to germany the strength of the german economy is the backbone of the uh, small and medium sized companies right. by the way every big company is coming out of it's not it, it, big companies in germany are not designed on um, uh, stock markets big companies are coming out of um, uh, family business business over the generations mm -hmm. and i think this is something that uh, links us that probably the uh, indian economy of the future uh, should be uh, uh, more similar to a german uh, um, um, economy in the structure of big and small companies and family owned and stock market listed um, companies then for example um, uh, between germany and us or right. um, other big big uh, china for example yeah, right. where the state is owning most of the companies right and in this collaboration then comes the question of defense and military as india and germany are collaborating on building of submarines and other things and fleets that you have seen so what do you think about this defense cooperation and how can this defense cooperation help in this mm. Um, I think um, um, more independence from Russia in defense issues is one of the most important topics of the foreign security policy of India because mm -hmm. there is a disillusion on that what can be um, delivered from from Russia. Um, um, I, my impression is that um, um, uh, India wants to have more German, European, or maybe also U.S. American technology in mm -hmm. the defense sector and. um we should uh, support india by having that uh, that indian government is promoting that point uh, in every um, international or every bilat bilateral contact maybe has also to do with the fact that in case they know that germany in case that germany um, jumps over the fence concerning weapon export mm. um this is so to say the the highest level of of uh, the gold standard of uh, 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 trust um, mm. um, and we said in case that we come to a more closer cooperation on that field in several other fields of cooperation um, mm. uh, things might go um, easier i promote very strong uh, that germany uh, helps india to become more independent in defense mm. uh, from from uh, its existing sources we see the necessity uh, of india to have a strong um, um, defense um, on land uh, but also on sea mm. and uh, um, uh, i think germany should help to to become more sophisticated on that mm. field on this idea of making india more sovereign what do you think should be the structural changes or is there any structural changes re even required in this issue or do you think that the current foreign policy is up to date to do that i think india is doing a change in its foreign policy in the last years mm. um everyone in india knows that india is too big to hide <laughs> mm. um, and and it's also for the others mm. nobody uh, india is too big and too important to ignore yeah yes. and uh, both uh, is uh, a, a vice versa responsibility yeah mm. india has to do more and others has to do more concerning india mm. and from my point of view um india is a, a ideal um a, a mediator uh, between the um a, 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 Southern states, so to say, the um, uh, uh, the global south between states that are not yet uh, uh, highly developed mm. and those who are already mm. highly developed, um, because India has uh, uh, out from its out of itself uh, the power to to go the way by itself, mm. uh, but should do that together with others because it, it's more it's more effective to cooperate than to confront. and if uh, not confront what is the uh, plan forward what are the things that you see are the most important f 
for not confronting each other and for moving together shoulder to shoulder. I would appreciate um, um, if the European Union reaches an agreement with the Indian government on uh, uh, new trade uh, 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 regulations between the two um, economic uh, 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 camps. Uh, there will be a new round of negotiations. Um, unfortunately, the signals are not uh, so optimistic, but hopefully the new challenges for us all, uh, not only climate, but also peace in the world and, and uh, confrontation between um, uh, 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 others, for example, China with the US, mm. um, uh, uh, led us to a situation where European Union and India both uh, see that they have to... to um, uh, jump over some uh, 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 obstacles uh, they have on. Uh, it's the, it's not only the responsibility of the European Union that it does not work, uh, not not yet finalized, uh, but it's also not only the reason uh, uh, the responsibility of the Indian government. It's okay. on the, both both sides have to work closer together. And uh, um, uh, uh, a second is that I think we should um, make it much easier for people from um, uh, European Union and India to uh, uh, bridge the uh, 5,000 kilometers um, between uh, the two uh, uh, regions and to, to see and to learn each other from each other, to study in Germany uh, or in India, to um, work in Germany or in India. And therefore, we also should think about a, 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 a more open uh, visa regime and travel regime and working uh, allowance um, uh, between India and the European Union. Uh, talking about visa regimes and uh, working allowances, uh, we have seen that uh, Germany is trying its best and so is India to uh, harness this relationship. What do you think is the burden on both these countries' shoulder that they have to uh, completely overcome to finally uh, see eye to eye on this subject and to grow more together, hmm. especially on visa and uh, student migration and study? Uh, it's uh, always the same that uh, people um, uh, on the streets in right. our countries has to understand that it is a win-win yes. for both sides and not a risk for German jobs or Indian jobs if mm. um, people from other countries um, come, come in. And uh, this is something that we, where we have to uh, do hard work. Uh, Indian people, most of the young Indian people are uh, uh, excellent in English language. Mm. Uh, better than me, <laughs> and uh, also young people in Germany are excellent in English language uh, uh, in very uh, minimum on the cases where they go on universities. Uh, therefore, there is a common um, basis for communication, and we would appreciate, together mm. with uh, Max Müller uh, and others, uh, mm. that uh, the German language uh, is uh, also more and more attractive um, in India. Yeah. Uh, we have had some figures that were better than they had that uh, they are now because uh, young people in India know that with English language they can travel around the world. But uh, to have German language skills is very helpful uh, in Germany because if you go into a factory and, and as in, for example as an engineer and you have to talk to your uh, employees um, um, on the, um, in the plant, uh, you can not do it in English, you have to do it in German. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, while uh, talking about this point, what do you think are the demystifications that uh, one needs to do to understand these foreign policy changes that a uh, normal uh, youth of India and Germany can uh, understand and easily help them penetrate these ideas into the ground level? What are the demystifications that are required? Um, to believe in its own uh, nation as a strong nation is necessary to be um, self-confident. Mm. But to believe that problems could be solved easier by doing it on a national uh, singular way mm. instead of cooperating is also something that uh, is a, a, a big misunderstanding. Mm. Um, and both countries, India and Germany, are very much depending on open borders, on international, relatively open borders, on international trade, on, on uh, international communication. Mm. I go, can go into the internet in India and, and, mm. and look into my, my account of the Deutsche Bundestag and mm. uh, uh, such things work perfectly and should work in the future too. Mm. And um, um, I think uh, uh, from a strong perspective, uh, from a perspective of self-confidence, self, -conf 
from a self-confident perspective, mm. to be member of a strong nation, mm. uh, open-minded for cooperation mm. across borders and open-minded for people from abroad. Mm. Uh, this is, um, so to say, the recipe for the 21st century mm. for more peace and prosperity mm. in the whole world. Mm. Uh, exactly. This is something that I have not only to tell to young people in India, but nearly, I would say much more to, to people in Germany. Yeah. Well, uh, this is a very important point that you raised because uh, this, I totally agree with that we need to demystify more and uh, expand on these ideas, that uh, these cross-border relationships. And uh, we also see the role of AI and these new technologies coming in and creating a borderless world. But how do you see their role in the workforce and migration between these two countries? Is it positive, negative, or do you have another assessment about these things? Uh, the integration of uh, significant parts of the Indian industry yes. uh, through dig digitalization already happened. Uh, uh, Fifteen years ago, when I was first time in India, mm. uh, I, I called the Lufthansa call center mm. uh, to, to book um, um, a, a rebook a flight, mm. and the result was I was uh, uh, at the Telephoning, uh, telephone call with a lady in Bangalore, <laughs> which was only uh, 100 kilometers it's away from me, yes. <laughs> but I, I, I dialed a German number. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and it was interesting, and, and, and I think a lot of companies in Europe um, uh, 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 gave work share or give work shares to uh, Indian uh, partners yes. uh, uh, because they work uh, right. in, in, in digital on projects yeah. uh, where uh, then uh, in Europe or North America. Um, after eight hours later or five hours later, um, the work is continued. Therefore, um, digitalization um, um, took a lot, uh, puts a lot of integration of India into the world, mm. and uh, we benefit a lot of Indian technology and in digitalization. Mm. Um, uh, uh, but, but bringing people together is um, something more difficult, more challenging, but mm. also necessary. And with that, I would like to ask you that when uh, we look at your career, you have had such an illustrious long trajectory of being uh, starting from uh, the German Navy, then going to uh, becoming an MP for the Christian Democratic Union, the foreign spokesperson, member of the working group. What are the memories that stick out to you that you think are important lessons for foreign policy and most importantly for the ethics and values that we all should share and cherish uh, for a sustainable growth together? That every human being is an individual hmm. uh, that has the right to be judged as an individual. Hmm. Not to put the Indians, hmm. the Polish, the Italians, the Germans hmm. in one box, but hmm. to see that every, every human being has its own dreams, hmm. um, challenges, mm. uh, capabilities, mm. excellencies, and mm. uh, uh, this is so to say, from my point of view, it's a Christian view on a mm. human being, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that uh, um, yes. uh, other religions too share mm. uh, the, the, the view that um, um, every human being has its own uh, individual uh, right and, 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 and uh, um, uh, dignity and therefore um, uh, 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 to, to also to be open-minded in, mm. in foreign policy. Mm. To see that in every country, I'm sure also in North Korea, <laughs> <laughs> are some people that are open-minded enough to be, uh, to be able to have a dialogue. At the moment we cannot have dialogue with people in North Korea because we don't have no chance to meet them. Mm. and they are not linked to the internet, but be sure also in such a country like North Korea there will be someone who is uh, uh, potentially on our side concerning freedom, international uh, law, international um, uh, rule of uh, law, uh, 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 rule of, of, of law, and um, uh, uh, having that in mind that in every country uh, people with totally different views on challenges um, uh, are together as it is in my own country and mm. that therefore uh, the field for cooperation is much bigger than mm. expected. This is, I think, uh, 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 one of my experiences in foreign mm. policy. Uh, one of the German traits that uh, in our last interview uh, we found out about was that you have a very dry sense of humor. One uh, who is outside of Germany ca cannot even tell yeah. if <laughs> you are uh, telling a joke or not. Uh, similarly, uh, 
many of you, uh, as I have noticed, have a poker face about the future. But do you have a pessimistic or an optimistic hope about these foreign relationships? Um, we are now going in this this years. We are going to stormy times. Yeah, through stormy yes. times. We had the economic crisis in the so-called Western world, banking crisis, yes. uh, um, and, and uh, we have the euro crisis uh, in the European Union. Mm. We had this COVID um, mm. uh, pandemic, and we we had um, we have uh, this war or Russia against Ukraine. Mm. Um, the times are challenging now, but I'm hundred percent sure mm. that the now young generation and the generation behind this now young generation. Mm. Will have will live in a uh, will we live in a better world than uh, we and our parents and grandparents? Um, the development of the world in total is mm. positive in the right mm. direction and not mm. wrong. And we talk only about the challenges, but not about the the things we reached. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, for example, concerning um, uh, water for the people, food for the people. Um, we are not not yet. Uh, a really good result so that we can say we are ready, but it's much better than maybe 20 or 30 years ago. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And the same also with pollution, with, with mm. even with climate. Yeah? Mm. Therefore, I'm optimistic that the following generation will have a better, better, more opportunities and a better, better world than we have, which is not a miracle because they stand on our shoulders. Yeah? Mm. They, they, they stand on our shoulders and have a few on the world from a higher perspective. They also have probably higher expectations on that what the world for them can deliver. But yes. um, in general, no one has to be afraid for the future. Um, uh, besides some irritations we, we have, as it was always in, 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 human, in human history. Uh, with that note, I would like to thank you for taking out mm -hmm. the time for doing this, sir. Thank you for watching the GEO interviews. Uh, until next time, uh, thank you for subscribing and most importantly, thank you for cherishing these ideas that uh, we are discussing here today. So Jai Hind, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs>